So RGB LEDs are being kind of omnipresent these days, especially in PC gaming. So every PC gaming company out there, you just name one, they probably have some RGB product that they sell. And so at some point I decided I wanted to add some RGB goodness to my own PC. After all, I have a tempered glass panel, so why not put my system at show? I mean, but I just couldn't choose any of the offerings that, that are on the market right now. What if I could do something similar, but open source and Linux compatible from the beginning? So I bought an Arduino Nano, I bought an RGB strip and some other components, and here's what I got. Just take a look at it. So as you see, I have basically any possible aesthetic feature that uh, the commercial RGB products offer right now. So I have various effects, I can change them from my operating system with a couple of mouse clicks. And as you see, the, the final result is pretty good. I mean, it's obviously DIY, I mean, just look at the project box. So maybe at some point in the future, I will just 3D print a custom case for the Arduino and all its components and maybe even add some cables leaving so that I don't have to see those Keshap and Mustard cables. But for about 40 euros of total expense, plus, I mean, one day or two of work, I got myself a really nice product. So let me show you how I actually made this thing. So this is the electronics that make this thing work. And uh, this is an SVG, you will probably find it in the description so that you can have a better reference if you want to do this yourself. So this is fairly simple, even if it doesn't look like, like it is. So first thing we have the core, the brain of this thing that is basically the Arduino Nano. So the Arduino will be controlling the uh, LED strip through the data pin. So this green line you see here is the data, the data wire that basically tells the uh, little microchips inside the LED strip, what to do. So in my particular case, I have the data pin uh, on the pin 5 of the uh, Arduino Nano, the pin D5 to be more correct, which is basically the digital pin number 5. And it runs through a 470 ohm resistor and this is basically, this sh I'm not big into electronics, but this should be to uh, eliminate some of the noise that uh, may be passing through the data line, so to preserve both the RGB strip and the Arduino itself. So uh, you have this 470 ohm resistor uh, in series in the data line, and then I have it connected to the green wire, which is the data wire again, of this plug over here, which is a, a semi-standard plug for digital RGB strips. Let's get to this connector here. So this is a female connector and this is very practical in the means that you can connect your RGB strip like without soldering anything and you have this female connector that you can uh, replace if you want to, but your RGB strip stays untouched. So this female connector over here has uh, these three wires, as we have seen already, we have the, the green wire, which is connected to the 470 ohm resistor. Then we have a white wire and a red wire. 
So the white wire is the ground and the red one is 5 volts. So uh, in your RGB strip, most likely you will find uh, two sets of red and white wires. And uh, what I did with those is I connected a 1000 microfarad capacitor and mine was rated for 10 volts. Uh, yours has to be rated, I mean 10 volts, it should be the bare minimum, it should be good if it's rated for 5 volts, but just make sure, if, if you want to, to be sure, just make sure that the capacitor is rated for 10 volts or higher. This means that the capacitor won't blow up. And this is needed to preserve the, the RGB strip to flatten out any irregularities of the power supply. So you add this 1000 microfarad capacitor in parallel to the uh, 5 volt and ground wires of the RGB strip connector. And then what you have to do is uh, you connect the ground wire also to the Arduino because the grounds have to be connected together. Again, I'm not big into electronics. Um, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have asked an electronical engineer and he said this is totally correct and it's needed to work. So you have to connect your ground pin in your Raspberry Pi uh, also to the common ground. So uh, if you have a ground for the RGB strip and you, you of course have the ground for the, the Arduino Nano, you have to connect those together. And then down here, this pale yellow connector here is actually a Molex connector. And why Molex? I mean, it's an old connector and it's it's ugly and bulky, but why did I choose this? Well, two reasons. I had a couple of female Molex connectors lying around anyway, and uh, the Molex connector is fairly easy to modify. So in the Molex connector, you have four wires. You may have uh, less than that or just four, but it doesn't really matter. So the red one is five volts, uh, there are two middle ones that should be black um, or it could be any other color really, but the middle ones are the ground connectors. And the yellow one, which in this picture is the rightmost, is 12 volts. So what I did is I removed, I physically removed uh, two pins in this Molex connector. So I removed the 12 volts and the ground pin in my female Molex connector. And I connected the ground uh, to the common ground, so th the same ground that is connected to the uh, capacitor, to the Arduino, and to the RGB strip connector. And then I connected 5 volts to uh, the RGB strip, again in parallel with the capacitor. So this is basically most of the circuit that you see in that white box over there. Of course, this connector over here needs to be connected to the uh, WS2812B uh, digital RGB strip. This is the exact kind of RGB strip that I got. Uh, and there are some variations of this. Uh, as, as long as it's 3 pin and 5 volts, it should be good. But this is basically the, the, the exact kind that I got. So I connected the RGB strip to, to this connector here. So of course the Molex connector, I, I got it connected to my PC PSU, so my, to my power supply. And it should be able to deliver enough <laughs> current to uh, power the RGB strip. And then finally I have a weird setup for controlling the Arduino itself. So the Arduino has a mini USB connector and I have that connected to the internal motherboard USB 2 header through an adapter. So I have this uh, connector that basically converts the uh, USB 2 header in the motherboard to a female USB type A. And then to that female USB, I have another USB cable that is type A uh, male to mini USB male, and it's connected to the Arduino. Now I could have done something a little bit different. Actually, I could have connected the five volts and ground of the Molex connector right uh, um, right to this pin over here. This is the five volt pin, and it should have been working fine. And of course the ground has to be connected anyway, but 
I chose to connect the USB to header basically because this allows me to provide uh, yes power. I mean th that's of course th that's needed, but also a serial connection to the Arduino so that I can control it and I can tell it basically to change the effect to whatever I want. So this is basically all that there is uh, about the electronics of this project. It's fairly simple. I mean, you don't have to be an electronics expert to do this. I am not and I did it. So I think that's enough to say. And the next thing actually to complete this project is the code. And the code for the Arduino is actually on GitLab right now. So it's gitlab.com slash gapmus slash ardhue uh, underscore core. I will leave a link in the description, of course. So this project, by the way, it's uh, licensed under GPL v3. So just for your, for your information, you can edit this and do whatever you want with it as long as you redistribute it under the same license. So let's have a look at the actual code and see what it does. So here we have the actual code itself. It's fairly simple. You can just, um, I mean, you can just download this and if you want to replicate my exact setup and it would just work out of the box, it's fairly simple. It has a bit of complication for all the effects and the way to control them, but it should be plug and play. It should be ready to go for any similar configuration to mine. So uh, the first thing I ha I do here in the code is I import the Adafruit NeoPixel library. So this library made by Adafruit is actually uh, made exactly to control the W whatever. I don't remember the uh, the name every time. So it, it, it's basically made to control those uh, digital RGB strips. And uh, the, the reason it's called NeoPixel is because the because Adafruit sells their own brand of uh, digital RGB strips, which follow obviously the same kind of protocol. And they, they branded them as NeoPixel, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, so I have uh, some definitions here. I have the data pin set to five. So if you, if you replicate my setup and you uh, don't want to use pin five for whatever reason, just make sure to change this. I have defined the number of LEDs, in my case 60. Again, if your RGB strip has less or more LEDs, just make sure to change this value as well. I don't want to delve too much into the code here, but suffice to say, so the, the default effect is wave. So this kind of rainbow thing with all colors and stuff, and you have a variety of effects and you can choose them by basically uh, opening up a serial connection with your Arduino Nano and sending like terminal, terminal like commands. Uh, so if the effect is something like digital RGB that doesn't require any argument, you just write digital RGB and the effect applies. Uh, otherwise, if the effect is something like, uh, I don't know, static that requires one color to be set, it's static space uh, three digit uh, red space three digit green space three digit blue. So it's something, something like this static 255, 255, 255 for white or static 255-000-000 for red and so on. Um, I mean, this is not the most user-friendly way to control um, an accessory that you have inside your PC. And even, even myself, I, I didn't like this too much. So what I've done is that I, I basically created another, um, a, a companion app for, uh, for this little project and it's called Ardhue. Um, so this is basically a GTK3 uh, GUI for uh, sending these serial commands to the Arduino and setting the color and the effect to whatever you want. But I, I don't want to get into the code of this. It's fairly simple, but it doesn't really matter to, to see the code of this little thing. What I want to show you instead is the application itself. And there you have it. Let me just resize the window real quick. There you go. So it's a very simple uh, window. Um, this is version 0 0.1 because it's just like the first version doesn't have so many fancy features, but it's got the basics working. So on the left, you have all your effects, wave spectrum, digital RGB, static, non-supercar, wipe, uh, fade, running, and meteor. 
so you have quite a variety of effects here and to apply them you just select them and press this apply button on the top right of the window uh, if the effect has any setting for the color you will see them here so static you can set one color so just say white and press apply and it will just the rgb strip will just change to white uh, none is just turning off the led strip supercar again takes one color wipe takes up to three you can decide to take to, to let it take just one or two or all three of them same thing for fade running again takes one uh, color only meteor meteor same thing one color only and this is a really simple application all it does is basically it opens a serial connection uh, with the arduino and send and sends it uh properly formatted commands very easy very simple and it works like a charm i mean it's very basic it won't blow away anyone probably but it works for what it has to do and nothing stops me from adding new features as i go by so if i just want to add a new fancy effect that i've seen somewhere else i just write the code for it for the arduino and just write the appropriate uh, front-end code for the gui and that's done i mean it's the beauty of open source you can do basically whatever you want with it so I'm not an Arduino expert by any stretch of the imagination. This is actually my first project uh, with an Arduino and I'm fairly impressed. I mean, it, I've worked with, with MCUs uh, before for university, but the Arduino is really simple to use and uh, very powerful, I have to say. Uh, you can do a lot with it and I still have to explore its full potential. But this is the beauty of open source, I mean, this is my first attempt in doing something like this, and it already turned out pretty great in my opinion. There's definitely room for improvement. So if I want to add new effects or new features along the way, I can do it. If any one of you guys wants to, you can make a pull request. You can fork my repo and do whatever you want with it. <laughs> it's better than any product that, that's sold right now that's in the market because you can update it. You can do whatever you want with it. You're not locked in into an environment. And I'm pretty sure that I can control something like those RGB fans. Those should have the same protocol of the RGB strip I'm using. So by adding two or three connections, I can probably control a whole lot of, uh, of hardware and just by adding some lines of code. That's pretty awesome in my book. So guys, this is gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.